Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to another episode of what was on sale today at the grocery store. Um, sort of what was on sale at the grocery store. Today we're gonna do beef shin. Uh, a couple weeks ago I mentioned that, you know, I, we did the beef rib video. And a couple of weeks ago I went to a grocery store called Blue Sky. Um, it's a place that I should go to more often. And when I was there, I remembered I should go there more often. And they have beef shin, and it's always there, and it's always a really good price. I don't know about you, but our mainline grocery store, um, you know, the big mass market grocery store, the one that I normally go to, they don't often have beef shin. It's one of those things where you have to ask the, the kid behind the counter, can I get some beef shin? And they look at you and go, well, maybe, I don't know, I don't know what that is. You'll have to come back on the day when the boss is here, the butcher's there. Um, Blue Sky always has beef shin, always has it at a really good price. So this was $6.50 a kilo, $6.50 Canadian a kilo, works out to about $3 Canadian a pound. I don't know what the exchange rate is for our, our American friends or our Australian friends. I think the Australian dollar is pretty much the same as the Canadian dollar, um, which is a pretty good price for this type of meat. And it's one of those cuts that no matter where you go, what culture you go to around the world, it's one of those cuts that everybody uses in a long, slow braise. Probably the, the most famous one would be asobuco, Italian preparation. Um, we did asobuco on the channel in 2008. It is a video that is now um, marked as private. You can't see it. <laughs> YouTube in 2008 was a kind of a really weird place. Um, and the video, the video that's on YouTube from then is, is um, is not very good. Um, so I may if, find the original uh, on my hard drives and stick a little bit of that at the end of this video. So the obvious thing would be to do asobuco, but I don't wanna go that route. I wanna do something that I kinda like all of the flavors. So I'm gonna build kind of a sauce. We're gonna braise it for a long time. Um, I've got a little bit of oil in this pan. We're gonna heat it up so that we can brown the shanks. And I'm gonna start here in this blender jug to build a sauce. So I've got some hot banana peppers, those go in. I've got an onion, that goes in. I've got a little bit of carrot and the last little bit of celery from the bottom of the fridge. I'm gonna put in some cumin, I really like cumin. I've got some dried chipotle powder and a little bit of salt. Pour in some chicken stock just to lubricate the whole thing. And I'm also gonna put in about a half a can of tomato paste. Um, cumin and tomato paste in any sort of sauce like this, uh, I really like. We did, a, um, we did a recipe a couple of weeks ago for braised cabbage. I think that was probably posted a week ago and it was cumin with tomato paste, absolutely amazing sauce. And I'm braising beef, so of course there's gonna be some Marmite. I'm not gonna put too much in, um, maybe about a tablespoon this time. This is going to cook, um, this is going to cook in the oven low and slow. It's probably gonna be in the oven for five or six hours at 310 or 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so all of these flavors are going to build and build and build and build. I'm going to still brown the meat, but I got to tell you, uh, not strictly necessary with this type of preparation. Because of the long, slow cook, that Maillard, that Maillard reaction is going to happen anyway. Maillard is time, temperature, um, you can do it at a lower temperature if you do it for a longer time, or you can do it at a higher temperature in a shorter time. It's up to you. So this would work in a crock pot. For sure this would work in a crock pot. So I'm gonna heat this pan up a little bit more. Okay, so let's check on the pan. Um, this is pretty hot. Let's get the sauce finished. And we just give that a blend. Good, we're ready to go. Okay, we'll get these shanks in. And you're right, I didn't put any flour on. Um, I know that's the thing that everybody does, and the idea is that the flour 
sort of builds or the flour builds a roux to thicken the sauce as it cooks. Five, six hours in the oven, the sauce is gonna thicken on its own. You don't really need the flour. And I find that when I watch people cook, um, oftentimes the pan is too hot. And if the pan is too hot, you burn the flour. You scorch the flour and I see like black bits of flour in the bottom of the pan. And that in the end detracts from the flavor. And it also doesn't add anything to this thickening. The longer, the hotter that you cook the flour, the less thickening power it actually has. So, I often don't put any flour on. And I'm only gonna give these sort of a cursory browning. Okay, now I'm going in with the sauce. Just get all of it in there. Now, I'll turn those over. You don't have to. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of wine. I'm using white wine. Uh, farther back you go in history, this type of braise was always done with a white wine. And if you don't wanna use white wine, um, use a little bit more chicken stock. I put chicken stock in the, in the original sauce in the blender. Put in a little more chicken stock and then splash in some vinegar. Or use verjus. Verjus is going to bring the acidity that you need. You're looking more for the acidity and the white wine to lift the flavors rather than a heavy red wine that would mask the flavors. Now, oven is preheated as I'm putting a lid on. I will lift the lid every once in a while in the oven, take a look and adjust the amount of liquid. If, it, uh, if the liquid looks like it's driven off, or it's getting too thick, I'll put in a little bit more wine or I'll put in some water. Okay, so these are well and truly cooked. Fall apart, fall off the bone and the marrow has pretty much cooked right into the sauce. So let me get these out. The sauce looks amazing. The sauce is one of those things where I could put this back onto the stove top, maybe a little bit more wine or some water or stock, and I would be able to make an absolutely incredible gravy. Look at the color on that. Hey, Glenn, hey friends. Yes, okay. gravy. That'll make a great gravy. So I let's do this with potatoes, I think, inside. Okay. Um, you can serve it with almost anything. And you don't, I don't think you need a... You don't think I need a knife? No, this should just fall apart. It appears to be, yes. It's right out of the oven hot? Mm-hmm. Great. <laughs> there we go. Mm-hmm. That big, beefy flavor from a shin. Uh, a little on top without it even being a gravy. Mm. Just straight up. Let me, let me get a little bit of that sauce. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's really good. So, um, I didn't have a recipe. I just threw a bunch of stuff down. Went through the fridge. Well, you got all the basics though, right? Yeah. You, got, you got some tomatoes, mm -hmm. little, you know. Mm. It's in the, I don't know what else is in there. I can only get the tomatoes. What do I know? Tomato paste, wine, chicken stock. Um, there were some hot banana peppers that were getting close to the end after the last pizza night. There was some... Get those mushrooms in there too? Didn't get the mushrooms in. There was, okay. some, there was some like those last little stalks in the middle of the celery. <laughs> and a carrot. And that's it. So Perfect. it's a low, slow simmer. You could probably pull this out of the oven. You put it on at 320. You could pull this out of the oven in like three hours. Um, I cooked it a really long time. That's good though. Yeah. And there's no marrow in the bone. You can't even pick it out. Nope. <laughs> so, um, beef shin, relatively inexpensive. You can treat it like any pot roast, really. Any pot roast recipe that you have, substitute in the beef shin and you're gonna be fine. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. So here you have it, my interpretation of an osso buco, 
or a braised veal shank. Now, this is just my version. There's many, many versions of this dish. And something that I think is very important is don't get caught up in the dogma of thinking it's not also buco because it doesn't have gremolata on top, or it's not also buco because it doesn't have this or that or the other thing. These recipes can be whatever you want. So make it your own. Take the ingredients that you really want to have and do it the way you want it. You're the one that has to eat it after all.